everyone, Simon here from Aquabatics Calgary and welcome to our quick reference river safety series. In these videos we're going to cover key safety skills and touch on the critical points to execute safe and efficient rescues. In this episode we're looking at throw bagging. We don't have time to go over all the nuances in this video, so for context we assume you know what a throw bag is, what it's used for and basically know how to throw one. We're going to break this throw bagging tutorial into the setup, application, and then close out with a few key points. When setting up to throw bag, you may want to consider the following things. A safe and effective location. You need to have good footing, somewhere that's useful to a potential swimmer, both that it's near the feature they're likely to swim out of, and if they grab the bag from a rescuer, it improves their situation. And also, is the location appropriate for a dynamic or static belay? Once you've dialed in a safe and effective location, you're now likely playing the waiting game for your paddling partner to run the rapid. Stay alert at this point, communicate through the group, and be ready if anything goes down. For the application part, your buddy swims and it's go time. We break the actual rescue into four key communication pieces. Get the swimmer's attention. Shout their name. Blow your whistle. Try your best to make eye contact. Tell the swimmer you're going to throw the bag. Motion to them you're going to throw. Or yell rope really bloody loudly. If they know it's coming, they will likely look for it. Throw the bag to and through the swimmer. Once you've thrown the rope, tell the swimmer to grab it. Hey, hold on, hold on. This seems silly, but swimming can be very disorienting. If you miss with the throw, yell, signal, whistle, whatever it takes to let the swimmer know where the rope is and how to get to it. Personally, I tell people to hold on tight once they grab the rope. They're likely not gonna hear it, but it helps me close out this process. It also lets an experienced paddler know that they're about to have a load of tension come onto the rope. They're gonna go underwater and it's gonna suck for a little while. But if the rescuer has done their job properly, not letting go is a much better option. So that's the basic setup and communication process for executing a safe and successful throw bag rescue. A few key points to help you practice and to be a sniper with a throw bag are, Practice on dry land without letting the rope come out of the bag. Get accurate with it. Practice full rescues in safe locations on your local river. Many paddlers don't rehearse this skill, and like any other boating skill, without practice we risk getting rusty. Be familiar with when to use a static belay or a dynamic belay. You can see the video listed above for more details on this. The bag is always on the downstream side. Minimal extra rope in your system. Hold two ends of the rope together in front of your waist. Resist the urge to pull in the slack, as this can act as a human slingshot once tension comes on. Never wrap the rope around any appendage. This goes for rescuers and rescuees. If working with ropes around the river, always have a knife on you that's easily accessible in case you need to cut away from a tensioned rope. So that's it, our quick reference guide to throw bagging. It's a skill you hopefully don't have to use regularly, but practice and having a dialed process will hopefully ensure a successful outcome if you do need to use it. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get access to more great educational content as soon as it's posted. Alternately, check out our courses and get more great information at aquabaticscalgary.com.